So, hi. Good morning to everybody. This session is recorded for you to um, study this during your assessment. So, for the three ends of opportunity to start with this lesson, we have the following. So, for the three S, we start with the opportunity seeking, followed by the opportunity screening, and lastly, we will have the opportunity seeking. Now, there are different types or different sources of opportunities that we could look for. We will be tackling the lessons one by one. We'll start with the macro environmental sources of opportunities. We also have the industry and market sources of opportunities. We also have the consumer preferences, consumer peaks, consumer perceptions, and of course, the other sources of opportunities. Now, for the reference of this lesson, this lesson could be found in your book that is Entrepreneurship for K-12 by Dr. Eduardo Morato Jr. So let's proceed. Now, before we start with the macro-environmental sources of opportunities, we also need to look at the entrepreneurial mind frame, the entrepreneurial heart flame, and the entrepreneurial gut. So for the entrepreneurial mind frame, this allows the entrepreneur to see things in a very positive and optimistic light. So what do we mean by this one? It simply states that in every situation, there is a positive um, uh, area wherein you need to figure out what kind of opportunity could you actually do or create in, given the situation. I do have the char uh, Chinese characters right here. So in English, this is a crisis. In Chinese, um, correct me if I'm wrong, this is called Weiji. In this particular character, the, the character on my left, this one, symbolizes danger. And the character on my right symbolizes opportunity. So, bakit mo nga ba ito ipinapakita sa inyo? The only thing that I want you to realize that within a crisis, there will always be danger. But in every danger, there's also an opportunity. We need to keep in mind that even though we are stuck in a situation wherein we're probably um, having a hard time figuring out what to do, what to do next, how we could deal with the situation, we need to figure out as entrepreneurs, how should we settle things? How can we make things better, not just for us, but for others as well? So that is seeing the light or seeing the positive side of things um, uh, in all situations. So I have an example right here. I would be giving you a copy of the link for this one for you to read more into the situation or to explore more on this particular idea. Now, this particular example, this is actually a car called H2O Salamander. So the H2O Salamander was their solution for the problem that we have in the Philippines. Our country is known and prone to flooding, especially during the storm season. And with such crisis situation, they found an opportunity. So during the days that this particular car is not used in floods or whatsoever, this is actually a good, transform uh, good mode of transportation for the people within the community. So para siyang trike, na iniikot nila within the community. So it serves as a very good transportation system um, for dry areas and land. But if crisis arise and um, the, the water and the flood starts coming in, they actually use this for um, rescue as well. Ginagamit nila to. So they found an opportunity wherein they could inject their ideas given, what, uh, given the situation and they used all the resources that they have in order for them to create a very good idea. The next one is what we call the entrepreneurial heart flame. Now for the entrepreneurial heart flame, this is about the surging passion to find fulfillment in the act and process of discovery. So it's all about your passion. It's all about your passion, what you want, and how much you want things. So it is wanting something so much that the person would be willing to devote oneself totally to the quest. So what do we mean by this one? Um, I know for a fact that a lot of you have talents. A lot of you have um, hobbies that you actually enjoy doing. And some of us 
hindi natin tinitingnan na parang profitable ba yung ideas that I have as of the moment. So what we need to do now is find or figure out how can we make profit out of the things that we like to do. So as for me, I love coffee, I love food, I love fashion. So all of the business that I engage in are things that are related to those things because I am willing to explore more into it. I am willing to um, invest my time, invest my ideas into it because I actually enjoy it. And that's passion. So you, um, you are willing to devote your time, your efforts into something without um, you having a hard time doing it. So you actually enjoy it. That's loving your work, loving everything about it. And that's how I am in business. I love business. I love helping people when it comes to their ideas and their business. It's what I'm passionate about. So simply find your passion and maybe, maybe you could find an, a good opportunity that would fit you. The next one is the entrepreneurial cut game. So this is about the total involvement of the entrepreneur in the exciting game of business, demanding the keenest of intuitive abilities and the strongest intestinal fortitude. So what do we mean by this one? This is your ability as the entrepreneur to sense things without using your five senses. This is the intuition, the kutob na meron kayo in the business. You have this um, surging idea at the back of your mind na parang, okay, I'm going to deal with this um, idea because I think, I think that it's going to work. Sometimes our research fails us. And I have to admit, there were a lot of times that even us, um, who is actually engaging in the business, parang uh, kulang na nag-research ka. Kapag hindi siya tinatapatan din ng mga kutob na meron ka, you have that sense in you that maybe even though that the, the numbers are right, maybe it's not going to work because my gut tells me that it's wrong. So you don't pursue with it and you need to listen to that. Um, this is the ability to jump to insightful conclusion without doing rigorous process of thinking. So a lot of us have um, no, or no business people na hindi naman formally nag-aral ng, ng pagnegosyo. They don't have formal education but they simply have that intuition that lakas na loob na baon-baon nila in order for them to jump into the idea that works for them. So this, this also um, has courage. Okay? Having that courage to withstand any form of adversity. It enables the entrepreneur to plunge into difficult ventures with all the traps and pitfalls. Fearlessness. That's the key. Okay? Thinks anything is attainable with the idea that you have. You think that it's going to work and you could make it work because your intuition and your courage says so. And that's all about the gut. Okay? Hindi yan napapag-aralan. It's in you. It's within you na nararamdaman mo lang as a person. Now, in the sources of opportunities, I've mentioned that we're going to also look into the macro, micro, environmental sources of opportunity. So we'll start with the macro environmental sources. For the macro environmental sources, the types of environment, or well, we have the different types of environment. So we have the macro environmental sources and the micro environmental sources. When we say macro, these are outside forces. These are the things you cannot control no matter what. Hindi mo yan control as an enterprise. So what you do now is you, you try to adapt. You try to adapt to what's given than the situation na meron ka. So you as a business, you try to um, shift your gears and you make sure that you could adapt given the situation. When we say micro-environmental forces, these are within the control of the enterprise. These are within the business itself. So when we say macro-environmental sources, this includes the social and cultural environment. This also includes the demographics. Political and legal environment. This also talks about your ecological, economic environment, and your technological environment. Simply put, this is your pestle analysis. Okay? Now, for the social and cultural, including the demographic factors, these are about the beliefs, the tastes, the behaviors, and traditions, and customs within a given area. So 
every province, every area, every country has their own belief, have their own tradition, have their own ways of doing things. And you, as an enterprise, you need to, uh, well, you need to adjust and you need to adapt to those things. Kahit naman tayo as individuals, we have certain things na ginagawa lang natin on our own. Okay? Pero hindi naman natin um, pwedeng sabihin that everybody is doing it. Maybe the majority is doing what you're doing, but you have a distinct behavior that is innate sa inyo lang. So, same goes with a certain um, area. So, for example, the people in the Philippines are considered as happy and hospitable people. Now, for others, let's say um, Russia, Russia, they don't smile that often. They find it rude um, to, to greet and have small talk with other people. And that's part of the culture that they have. Okay? You as an enterprise, you need to figure out what works for you and how you can make it as part of your advantages. So for this one, um, one example that I could give would be, let's say, McDonald's. McDonald's companies um, have this routine as part of their strategy. They try to make sure that everything is localized, meaning um, the meaning of this term is used to describe a product or service that is developed and distributed globally, but is also adjusted to accommodate the user or the consumer in a local market. So what do we mean by this one? Whenever they put out their franchise in different countries, they make sure that it fits on the taste buds within that country. They like more spices, they provide more spices. They like the chicken cooked this way, they provide it that way. They make sure that um, if the country loves uh, chicken with the bones in, they, they offer it to the market. If they prefer sandwiches, they would uh, bring out sandwiches as part of their menu. So they make sure that whatever they offer in the market is based on the taste of the people that are living within that country. So that is localized. Now, I show you here that, as I've mentioned, kasama sa ang demographics kapag sinabi natin social and cultural. So what's the lifestyle of the people in the Philippines? So this is actually a graph or a table that I show you here. Um, this is for the Philippines, key digital behaviors and trends over time across different demographics. So given this situation that these are the five interests, these are the behaviors of people or the influences that they have uh, in the market, what do you think now is the good opportunity or the best opportunity that you could offer within the market? So this is um, the numbers already. Ito na yung nakikita natin na, na, na present dito sa Pilipinas. So globally, we have this one. Itong mga naka-white, um, yan yung global average. Pero dito sa Pilipinas, yun yung in blue. So here in the Philippines, what kind of interest do they have? What kind of lifestyle do they have? What's their future outlook? How do they behave? What are the things that they eat? What are the age na nakikita natin na present dito sa Pilipinas? And how could you create a strategy because of those things? Now, even your generations could, uh, or the different generations could affect your overall business strategy. As I've mentioned, you have to make sure that you know your market first. So, for example, I have the veterans. Veterans are 70s and older. So, the people that are born uh, from 1945, okay, and then um, sila yung mga 70 years old na, they're the veterans. Baby boomers are born from 1946 to 1965 and is currently in their 50s to 70s. Generation X are people that are born 1966 to 1985, currently in their 30s to 50s. And the millennials are born from nine, 1986 to 2005 and currently under 30 years old. Now, how does your overall strategy affect now? with uh, the generations that are present within the business. For example, I am going to open up my business. And in my business, I want to, um, the place wherein I have my franchise, so let's say burger joint. Yung burger joint na pinagtayuan ko, dun pala sa area or dun sa village na pinagagalawan ko, mas marami dun yung veterans compared to the 
baby boomers and the millennials and the generation X. Even the Gen Z. Wala masyadong Gen Z. Mas marami doon yung mga old people talaga. As in yung mga veterans. So it's between the veterans and the baby boomers that are present within the area. Now, how should I introduce my product to them? I cannot just assume that, okay, ilalagay ko siya sa Facebook, ilalagay ko sa Twitter, ilalagay ko sa TikTok, or ilalagay ko sa, sa Instagram yung mga posts na meron ako. Why? My strategy now should shift to what um, these people acknowledge as part of their, um, uh, how they see okay? these ads na present. So, saan ba sila mas nakakakita na maay ng mga ads? Sa phones ba? Sa uh, Facebook ba? Do they even have TikTok? Are they even knowledgeable when it comes to technology? Okay? Even though that um, we assume that everyone knows how to use a phone, we cannot assume that they know how to use it properly. Okay? So, with those behaviors, so let's say, nag-survey ka, and dun sa survey mo, lumabas na hindi sila masyadong familiar dun sa mga um, ads na lumalabas or dun sa mga promotions na lumalabas dun sa market nila. So you have to make sure that you could offer something different. So instead of go- going for a non-traditional or a digital approach, why not go for a more traditional na approach when it comes to your marketing? So let's say I'm going to create commercials para makita nila sa TV. Uh, at the same time, I'm gonna flash it sa isang billboard. Makikita rin nila through posters, um, newspaper ads, kung saan or ano yung mga shows na usually pinapanood nila. Then I could air my commercial there. So again, your strategy may be different uh, based on who is within the business itself. Okay. Now, the next one that I have right here is this funny commercial. Okay. I hope that you can search this online. This is from Lockheed and St. Lomis that targets the Gen Zs and the Millennials due to the following reason. It tells the hyper-aware and health-conscious Millennials to disregard their notion of fat food being unhealthy and instead focused on the taste and the love for Lomi. So when once you watch the, the whole commercial, you would see there that they never said that it's a healthy meal. They never said that it's an alternative to what you have as of the moment. So what they said is that it tastes good and you feel as a love because of the lonely experience that you're having. During the rainy days, okay, na ganito yung panahon, mas ma- na-appreciate natin na okay, maganda pala at uh, masarap pala ang lomi kasi naiinitan ka and all that. And yun yung pinukusan nila. Okay. Even the music choice is meant to get the millennial audience engaged in the relatable song from the 90s. Personally speaking, I'm not um, really uh, into music, which is why hindi ako masyado familiar with the whole song. But because of the, well, I'm familiar with the chorus part. Okay? So uh, the familiarity that I have, ngayon kinonect nila dito uh, sa mismo commercial, it helps me now to remember and retain the idea in my head. And which also helps the business for me to remember them na, ah, okay, low me, locking me. Okay, sige, uh, bibili ako niyan kapag uh, naalala ko and I want some. So, um, there's that relation na nabubuo na, connection na nabubuo nyo with your audience because of those things. Even you, as uh, the Generation X, uh, or the Gen Z rather, uh, mas may enjoy ninyo yung mga bagay kapag nakaka-relate kayo sa isang instance. If it's not relatable to you or you don't find it convincing or you simply don't like the idea, then uh, hindi mo siya masyadong pinapansin. Okay? Now, we go with the political and legal environment. It governs business practices as well as the permits, approvals, and licenses that are necessary to op- uh, operate the business. So with this, you consider what are the existing laws, rules, and regulations within the area. You have to make sure that you are following, especially now that we have an ECQ, ECQ, para tayo nakaroleta. Okay? Hindi natin alam kung ano yung mga restrictions na kakailanganin natin i-follow. So 
with those existing restrictions, how would you operate as an enterprise? So let's say you are a gym or a spa. Are you allowed to open? A lot of the gyms, the spa, therapy sessions, or anything in wellness, for example, are now shifting into an online approach because there are existing regulations that uh, they need to follow when it comes to these contacts. Hindi kasi may iwasan na magdikit-dikit yung mga tao or uh, hindi may iwasan yung um, may interaction dun sa mismo area, okay? especially sa gym, equipment na naghihiraman kayo. So it cannot be avoided and malaki ang chances na makakuha ka ng virus dun sa mismo area. So what they do now is as long as you have the equipment at home and you can simply hire an equipment instructor and then you shift your idea from that so those are considering what's already existing how can you uh, operate knowing that these things are already existing so meron mga ganitong rules na kailangan natin i-follow meron na namang nilabas si IATF that uh, we cannot operate our restaurants if we don't have alfresco everything is all um, takeaway uh, hindi pwede yan dine-in dun sa mismo area. So, how would you now shift your overall operations? Would you invest in chairs? Would you invest in those um, tables na unnecessary naman para dun sa overall operations mo? A lot of um, restaurants now are shifting to um, parang cloud kitchen. So, nag, nag, um, nag-rent na lang sila na mga kitchen kasi yun na lang yung kailangan nila and they have grab, they have food panda to help them operate and give to the customers what they want. But other than that, because of the existing laws, rules, and regulations that are um, keep on changing, kailangan din talaga nila mag-adapt because again, this might kill your enterprise. This also includes um, the kinds of permits and licenses that you need in order for you to operate. So for example, Barangay permit, mayor's permit, okay, your fire and safety hazard permit, and all that are part of the things that you need before you even start operating your business. So it may be different and the process may be different from one place to another. So for example, dito sa Manila, uh, I remember when we were um, doing renewals for the permit, it's so exhausting kasi sobrang hassle ng sistema. But uh, uh, sa QC, medyo mas mabilis siya na nag-shift kami and naglagay kami ng mga stalls doon. Um, mas, mas smooth lang yung pagkuha ng permit kasi hindi, hindi na siya um, paikot-ikot or pabalik-balik. So all you need are some sort of papers, documents, and then papapirmahan mo sa kanila and then it, you're good to go. You can do it in one day. But I remember in Manila, hindi masyado talaga. So it will take you a week in order for you to process everything. So it might be different from one place to another. Now, I have this story right here. This is about the modernization plan and changing the Japanese driver's lives forever. So this is part of the modernization plan of the government. So uh, we have this build, build, build project um, from Duterte administration um, na until now, ginagawa niya pa rin. And um, the modernization is part of it. So what they want is to improve the Philippines. But may mga sacrifices. So marami yung mga nagsabi na parang this is a bad move. Um, this is quite unfair for the people, the jeepney drivers especially, kasi Ang hirap na nga kumita eh. Hirap na nga rumonda. Tapos, um, meron pang ganitong pasakit for them. And I totally agree with that. Kasi, um, this one, it forces the GME drivers now to pay for a certain rental fee um, para dun sa mga modern jeeps and parang bus-like um, na mga uh, mode of transportation na in-offer uh, sa kanila in order to make it look modernized and sinasabi nila that it's for safety, para mas maging okay, para din sa mga passengers. And I think that's good, but the thing is, it's forced. So, um, tinatanggal nila ngayon yung mga um, luma na ng mga jeep sa, sa daan, and I think that's okay, but um, it's 
parang talagang mawawala sila. And that's a bad move eh. Yung totally mawawala na yung mga jeepney drivers and all that para lang ma-implement natin to na mabuti. I think that's unfair. Okay? It's killing the business of um, the ones who are creating the jeep the jeeps itself at the same time, paano yung mga matatandang super na hindi naman marunong magpatakbo ng, kunwari, um, um, ibang makina dun sa sasakyan. Iba kasi ang makina kapag um, jeep. So, atras abante lang yan. Yan lang yung ginagawa niya. Pero kapag yung normal na sasakyan, um, iba rin yung takbo ng makina nun. And you, there are a lot of adjustments. But I agree that um, it's safer. Nakakita na kami ng mga modern na mga jeeps na it's going to be a lot safer and the capacity is a lot larger para siyang minibus. Pero yun nga, they need to make sure that there is a proper strategy and implementation process that is happening. Um, it's the result of poor urban planning. Kaya kailangan natin gawan ng paraan yung mga ganitong problema. So these, uh, this is an example of um, the modern transportation system in Taguig. But um, this is um, the one that I saw here in Manila. Um, iba, so para naman siyang minibus yung nakita ko dito sa Manila. So it's kind of different from, um, I think, the one in Cavite and Bulacan is also different. So meron din sa QC. Mas malayo na rin yung uh, ruta na tinatahak nila, yung rounds na pinupuntahan nila. And I think that's an improvement. But again, it shouldn't be forced. Now, economic environment. Economic environment is about the supply and demand, the import and export, foreign exchange rate, and the purchasing power of people. So let's talk about supply and demand. To give you an example, let's talk about face mask and face shields. There is this um, um, issue okay, in the government right now um, regarding um, the supplies that they bought from different suppliers at the time that the Philippines needed a lot of face masks and face shields. And um, the all Filipino company that uh, nananalo dun sa bidding, um, parang nalugi pa sila dun sa pagsusupply sa government. And um, what happened? Okay. During the time na wala pang pandemic, okay, nauna si um, Taal na pumutok and then nagkaroon ng matinding ash fall dito sa Manila. I remember that time I was here, I was outside actually and um, we were shocked with the situation of how how it got worse so quickly na parang uubuhig ka talaga dahil lang sa ang sakit niya sa mata din, ang sakit niya sa bibig, ganun, yung para na inhale mo yung, yung ashes. And it's not safe. That's why they required uh, everybody to wear masks. Okay? And um, at that time, nobody was wearing masks. Okay? Uh, only the people na parang concerned or uh, concerned sa health nila or may health issues, sila yung mga nag, nagsusuot ng masks. So, the suppliers weren't actually prepared that um, they need to supply that a lot large demand volume of people that want the mask. So what happens to the price? If the supply is low and the demand is high, prices went up and it rise. Sobrang laki nung shoot up talaga ng mga presyo ng mga mask. Yung mga simple na surgical mask, you could buy that for what? 20 pesos each? And that's expensive. Okay? Pero yun yung realities na meron tayo. That's why when the pandemic came to the Philippines and everybody was crazy and nag-hoard, ano nangyari? Pati yung mga simple essentials na meron tayo, hindi natin makita sa groceries. Because everybody was trying to hoard everything na parang um, you want to get to, uh, you want to have a piece of something. So, um, was it the right thing to do? Of course not. That's not the right thing to do. Only get what you need, guys. Okay, um, huwag kayong madamot ng mga tao. Kung ano lang kailangan nyo, yun lang yung bilhin nyo. So, yun yung uh, nangyari in terms of economic environment. You need to be aware what's happening. Uh, what's happening when it comes to the economic standpoint of the Philippines. We just got out of um, recession. I think that's mid-August. So, what effects ang nangyari sa atin? Mataas ngayon ang inflation rates. 
specialist mga commodities kasi even though the demand is low for um these commodities kinailangan ng bumawi ng mga suppliers kaya ang presyo mataas so mal- malaki pa rin yung um problema natin when it comes to um um jobs when it comes to um um the the goods and the essentials that we have in our everyday lives so paano ngayon ngayon maaapektuhan having those problems now um i have an example right here this is um the planning that they uh, that they want to do in clark so clark was um a plain land parang parang bgc dati eastwood dati na isang plain na lupa lang para siyang isang malaking bakanteng lote hektaryang mahabang um bakanteng lote ganun lang siya but people now started to develop it in clark they started um uh, having an airport and nagagamit na natin yung airport na yan so quickly din develop na nila yon because they want to have um another hub in provinces and i think that's actually a good idea na i congest yung Metro Manila na um, we have this notion kasi na lahat ng opportunities ay nasa Metro Manila. That's not true. Okay? Maraming opportunities outside Metro Manila na hindi masyado napapansin dahil nga lahat ng mga business hubs ay nandito. It's either in BGC, Eastwood, Makati, and um, it's already congested. So they're trying to decongest and um improve and develop certain provinces and they started with Clark Pampanga already so that's one thing that i think good na nangyayari that is helpful and beneficial for us now in the business how how are you affected in this kind of situation kumukonti ngayon yung population even this time na nagkaroon ng pandemya marami na ngayon yung nagwo-work from home and with that marami na rin yung umalis sa Metro Manila. In my area alone here in Manila, lahat ng mga dorm, dorm cells, hotels, um, residential areas before na for rent, bakante na sila lahat ngayon. And um, even the prices are down from, let's say, dorm na malapit sa USD before. I think that the cheapest that I could um, see before was around 12,000 per dorm. Um, ngayon, you could find, what, 5,000, 7,000 per month na babayaran mo and they, they would happily agree na nandun ka. Because again, they're trying to, again, um, have some sort of survival para dito sa negosyo nila. Another thing is the ecological environment. When we say ecological environment, this is about the growing awareness in the world today that makes this factor more and more important for countries and industries. So a lot of businesses now focuses on the ecological or save the planet advocacy. Even um, big companies such as SM, Robinsons, Ayala, they're trying their best to shift to a more sustainable living when it comes to their operation. Um, I think that um, SM has already started um, investing into their solar uh, power when it comes to their malls. I think the first one that they had Uh, was way back in 2019 that SM North EDSA. So 50% of the power that is consumed by that mall is actually from solar panels uh, na nanggagaling. So they're trying their best to have the Save the Planet advocacy. Now with this awareness that the people have in the business and in the environment, how is your business affected by these factors? Okay. So, paano ka ngayon makaka-adjust knowing that these are problems that are existing and you can do something about it. So, a lot of you guys are already shifting to a bamboo product. Okay? Sustainability, yun yung mga pinapakita niya sa akin. But, um, bakit nga ba natin mas ginagamit or uh, kinakapitalize si bamboo? Because, well, it's a grass. So, mas madali siyang tumutubo compared to, let's say, a narrative that it would take years for us to... Um, Um, grow another narrative. That's why it's expensive. Okay? Kaya sila mahal kasi ang tagal nilang investas. Ang tagal nila bago tumubo talaga. Now, what is the opportunities that we see for this particular product? I know that a lot of you are doing tumblers, organizers, and all that. 
And I think that you're very limited eh, pa- para sa mga ganong ideas. Huwag niyong ililimit yung sarili ninyo with the ideas that you can come up with with the engineered bamboos that we call it today. So, we have Kubo company that has already engineered a lot of their bamboos and use it as a tool para maging um, houses, modular houses. So, you can look for that online. That's called Kubo um, company. So, that's C-U-B-O. Um, they have modular houses that could be set up in, what, four hours? Uh, meron ka ng bahay na merong one bedroom, bathroom, meron na rin loft type ng mga houses na pwede nyo ilagay dyan sa mga areas ninyo if you simply look into it. Another example is this one. They assume that it's a Ducati. It's Banati. So this is called the Madati and this is actually a Filipino-made product. Nobody expected that this could actually be made from bamboo itself. Yung outer shell na meron sa mga motor. Pwede palang alternative yung bamboo dyan. Again, Engineered bamboos are durable and sustainable. So how do we plan to use it? How can we make it work? So please, I beg you guys, now wag sana kayo ma- malimit sa mga ideas niyo when it comes to um, these types of products because you could create something more, uh, more than just, uh, let's say, organizers and all that. Marami pa yung pwede niyang bigay sa atin. So, you could also incorporate technological environmental factors. This is about the leads that we have in terms of commercialization of new products. The nature of technology used for production of goods and services is an important factor uh, factor responsible for the success of a business firm. We all know that we are coming into a more digital era. So, how do we capitalize it? A lot of the things that we use now are found in our phone application. Even the lights could be controlled by Alexa. Uh, even our phones, um, the whole system of the house could be controlled by what? Google, Alexa. Um, and these are things that were products or produced because of the technological advancements na meron na. Because of those things, how do we incorporate that in our study? new inventions, new machineries, and new things that could be found. How do we deal with those things? Okay? So that is the technological factors. I will end this for our macro-environmental sources. So I'll see you to the next lesson, which is about the industry and market sources of opportunity. This talks about the micro-environmental factors. So um, simply click on the next link that I would be providing. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody.